What's up? Today I'd love to share with you probably the most important chess rule to understand. This is the rule that you absolutely need to know in order to reach to the level of 2000 rating and in fact in the current example I used just a single concept to defeat an international master. So let me walk you through my thinking process so that you can replicate it in your own games. Now in this position it is white to play, I'm playing white against finger of playing black. Now how do you play here if you're white? Now, there are a bunch of different moves that you can play, virtually almost any move that you can think of. And they all would follow certain chess rules, like you can centralize your knight, you can develop your bishop one way or the other, you can bring your queen forward in one of the ways, or you can make any prophylactic moves, like a bunch of stuff you can play here and it all would make sense. So how do you pick the right one? As I've noticed that often people are lacking a clear guideline. Not even that you don't know like any chess rule, you know a lot of them. It's rather that you don't know which one to prioritize. So let's clear all that stuff out and let's now focus on the single most important question that you're gonna ask yourself. And here's the question. How do I attack something on my opponent's half of the board? And usually it involves moving forward and creating a threat. Now, if you ask yourself that question, you realize that the amount of options that you have here becomes greatly limited. So just to spoil it, I played queen d3, threatening this pawn on h7. And again, if you think about it that way, you realize that all these moves that I you know, mentioned previously, they're not contain a specific attacking idea. And so you can kind of rule out of them because if you can find an attacking move, that would be the best. In this case, that is a straightforward threat to this pawn. Now black played pawn g6, what would you play next? Same question. How do I attack something on my opponent's half of the board? And with that in mind, I played bishop h6, hitting the rook. Now, rook went here to e8. Now, what do you do next? Well, in this case, I don't see any way to attack black. So, that's an interesting question, right? Does this violate this rule? Not really, because if you can't attack your opponent right away, then you ask yourself, okay, then how do I prepare an attack on the next move? So, you just add one more step to your thinking process, which fundamentally remains to be the same. And I played knight e5, which is also a move to the opponent's half of the board, but unlike previous moves, this one does not contain any specific threat right now. But still, it possibly prepares my attack in the future. Maybe I can play queen f3 and put the pressure down here, or maybe knight g4 and hit the bishop, so I do prepare some attacking ideas down the line. Now, black played knight to c6. And here comes the evergreen question to take or not to take. <laughs> now, if you've been following this channel for a while, then you know the rule to take is a mistake, right? So we avoid typically exchange for the sake of an exchange. Like you don't want to trade when it does not give you any specific advantages. And again, generally speaking, the way of thinking remains to be the same. Like how do I do something on my opponent's half of the board that would be an attacking thing that would destroy my opponent's position somehow? So with that logic of thinking, I played knight takes g6. I'm trying to open up the king and create threats. In the game, black decided to trade on c3 first, because if black were to take here, then after this bishop takes, if black is getting too greedy and accepts all kinds of sacrifices, then probably it's not going to end well for black, the king is just way too exposed. So let's take it back. In the game, black played to move knight takes c3, which makes sense. Uh, black is trying to trade off some material and when you are a defender you do want to get rid of some material. All right, how do you play here? Now the position looks really complicated, right? There are a bunch of options for white here to consider, but I stay true to my rule and I just ask myself how do I make an attacking move in my opponent's half of the board? And with that in mind I played knight to e7. Now the move which you probably wouldn't find otherwise, but following this logic it becomes pretty obvious because again, like b takes c3 is a move that I would definitely consider, but secondary, right? Because first of all, I do want to play an attacking move once again and my opponent's half of the board. So that's how I play this move. By the way, full disclaimer, it is actually not the best move in the position. Like Stockfish here says that bishop takes c6 was much stronger and it certainly was. But even being a grandmaster, I can't calculate variations as good as Stockfish, right? So I have to settle for something good enough for me, right? And following that rule is good enough, right? Even though not the best. Like bishop takes c6, yes, objectively was the best, but the variations are fairly complex. So I played knight e7, and my logic was that I just want to open up this diagonal and get to the king. So after that, I play bishop takes, king goes. Now finally, I have no more attacking moves on the king side, so I just recapture the knight. The position remains to be very complex, actually, and objectively speaking, black probably could defend somehow, but of course, in a real game, it's not that easy. Black played pawn e5, which makes sense, black is countering in the center of the board and is also opening his bishop. 
Okay, what do I do now? Now, as I ask myself, how do I attack something on my opponent's half of the board, I can't really see anything. Of course, I could take this pawn, but that would allow my opponent to trade off queens, which I don't want because I want to keep attacking. Once again, that reverts us back to the previous idea. If you can't attack right away, then just play the move that would prepare an attack on the following move. So I realized that I would love to bring my queen over somewhere here or here, but I can't because my queen is tied down to the defense of this bishop. So I just drop the bishop back with the idea to play probably queen to f3 and to create threats along this file on the next turn. Black anticipated that and played bishop g7. Okay, how do you play here? All the same stuff, right? So first you want to consider attacking forcing moves in my opponent's half the board. So definitely bishop takes g7 is something that you'd wish to consider. However, I rejected this. I realized that after this, if I try to just checkmate the king, he's got a way to cover. And I couldn't see a clear way for me to progress from here. So I rejected this line. Let's take it back. Now, if I can't take this bishop, then what can I do? At least I want to play a move in my opponent's half of the board. So I played bishop, not here, bishop to g5. That is not in itself an attacking move. That does not create any particular attacking idea. But nevertheless, I'm keeping it to my opponent's half. So I'm putting some pressure. At least I'm creating a pin and it is somewhat uncomfortable. In this position, black played pawn f5. Quite an ambitious move, attacking the bishop. Now, how would he play here? Uh, by the way, I'm just explaining this whole concept because just knowing the rule in itself, of course, is helpful. But chess is a tricky game, right? So you gotta understand all these different options that are available. Is, yeah, I mean, it's nice to play on the opponent's half of the board and to attack, but what if there are no attacking moves? And what is an attacking move and what is not really an attacking move? And what to do if your opponent attacks you, right? So all these questions you still have while playing. And therefore, I hope that after like walking through this game together with me, where I can explain exactly how I thought and how I found those moves while playing, you could actually see how this works in reality. All right, so after F5, now, the usual reaction of people when they're attack is to retreat or to defend. So, black goes f5, okay, let's drop the bishop back. However, there are some issues with it. First of all, that's a passive move and that's not what we want. In this particular case, black also might wish to push forward and double attack or maybe trade here. So, it looks like black is kind of expanding, feels unpleasant for white. All right, but more importantly, I want to still like push through with my original idea just to play moves that would attack something on my opponent's half of the board, right? So that is my focus. And even if, if my opponent attacks me, I want to still first check if I have any attacking moves, which would in this case be a counterattack, all right? So after f5, how can I play an attacking move on my opponent's half of the board? Then I can calculate bishop takes e7, which would be one way to counter, but black can recapture probably here or there. That will lead to a couple of trades. And ideally speaking, that's not what I want because I want to attack. But if I want to attack, I've got queen h3 check. And after the king moves, I can now relocate my bishop not over here, but over here. And now I've got this attacking idea of bishop b3, which would indeed be really uncomfortable. And by the way, while I said that you usually want to play moves on opponent's half of the board, in the vast majority of the cases that is true. But sometimes you can attack from distance and that also counts, right? If you've got linear pieces, which are basically queen, rooks and bishops, they can attack from distance, such as the queen or the bishop. Therefore, those moves also count as an attacking move. That's also fine. Now, my opponent realized that bishop b3 would be really annoying, and my queen is active here, therefore black played the correct move, bishop e6, covering this diagonal. Now we see that although black is attacking me here, but there is a simple solution, I mean, I can just trade. Uh, not really trade, I can just grab a pawn. By the way, referring back to the rule I mentioned earlier, to take is a mistake. Now, that rule facilitates the idea that you do not want an exchange for the sake of an exchange, basically when there is no idea behind it, and that does not give you anything, right? However, if you can grab material, if you can win, that is great, go ahead and do it, right? So that's not an exchange, you win something, and that's the point. So here, white grabbed the pawn, that's pretty cool, black played queen c7, in this case, black is getting out of this pin, and also possibly counters this pawn on e5. Now, a lot of players, in this case, would be tempted to play something like pawn f4, maybe, and solidify the pawn. But now, since you're part of the ordination, you know that that's not the way to go about things. We follow our super simple idea. How do I attack something on my opponent's half the board, regardless of your opponent and his actions? So I ask myself this question, how do I attack something? And I play the move pawn g4. Now, this attacks this pawn. 
it attacks the opponent, opponent's half of the board. And black really can't take here because that would open up this diagonal. And this would probably be really bad if black allows me to go inside with queen h7. You know, that, that would probably be very bad. Now, which also means that I'm threatening to capture over here, and probably black does not have time to take over here. So if black tries that, I'm gonna take here, attack the bishop. If it goes back, I can maybe push f6, attack here, once again opening up this diagonal. Again, the whole thing looks pretty scary for black. Probably is not a good idea. Therefore, in the game, black decided to solidify the position and played rook f8 just to provide one more defense to this pawn. Okay, what do you do here? All right, it's the same stuff. First off, you check immediate attacking moves in my opponent's half of the board. However, in this case, an exchange on f5 would only be an exchange. And if you can't attack right away, prepare and attack on the next move. So I played rook d1, possibly aiming to go rook d6, which would hit this bishop, and I'm bringing my last piece into the game. Here's also an interesting point about this whole strategy. Like, on a lower rating levels, the usual way of thinking is, if my opponent attacks me, I gotta defend. Now we can see that when you follow this idea, which is more advanced, and that's why I said that you need it in order to get to the 2000 rating and beyond that, uh, you can quite often counter your opponent's threats effectively just with your own threats. And so your opponent has no time to execute his ideas. Like, I don't have to worry about this thing right now, because here I can take on e7, and now black like, have to remove their queen from here, and that will drop the bishop. So it happened because the rook relocated to f8 on the previous move. So by actually creating threats, so in this case, I would just be up material and would continue my attack. This would be pinned and it would be bad for black. That's why black didn't capture on e5. So I could kind of get away with not playing any defensive moves, even though black tried to attack. Black tried to attack this one, black tried to attack with f5. You know, there are a bunch of threats, but I'm getting away without any defensive moves. Now, rook d1, black played knight g6 removing the, this knight from danger and reinforcing the threat to this pawn on e5. And uh, if I were a diligent GM, I would start calculating these lines. I take here, he takes here, I take here, he goes knight of three check, you know, and all that bunch of stuff. But because I'm a lazy GM, I want to play simple chess, right, without going into those complications. So I played with male stuff. How do I play an attack and move and my opponent's half of the board? And I play rook d6. Now I'm countering the bishop and I don't have to calculate any crazy stuff, you know, with all these trades all around. So rook d6 attacks the bishop, indirectly x rays the knight on uh, g6 and black has to do something about that. So black play rook e8, also good looking move, defending this bishop. And you guessed it right, I asked myself the same question, how do I attack something on my opponent's half the board? And I actually took here on e6. By the way, force and moves is a big part of this strategy. Because when you play a force and move, you force a particular response of your opponent. Therefore, you don't have to worry about anything that he can do. And so considering captures is a good idea. But we just avoid capture for the sake of an exchange when it doesn't give you anything. But if there is a capture that gives you something, then it's a great thing to do. And so by playing rook takes e6, I realized that on the next move I can play bishop b3. And that actually is quite annoying, given the fact that I have all these attacking ideas along these diagonals. And I'm still getting away without any defensive moves and without any calculation, right? So I don't have to calculate still all these like complex variations. So bishop b3 creates a straightforward threat. Now, but I can't really hold on to this rook because I also have g takes f5 if necessary. Adding one more attack here. I for black decided to just take finally this pawn on e5. And I could take here, but I realized that the rook is pinned, so I just took on f5 instead, so that I have an option on the next move, whether to take with a bishop or with a pawn. Black decided to close the diagonal. Now I've got to take the rook. Black played queen c5, which is also a counter-attacking move. It attacks this bishop, as well as this pawn on f2. Okay, so how do you play here? I mean, normally we'd love to play attacking moves in our opponent's half of the board, so you would consider something like e7, but in this case black indeed has a bunch of threats that you have to address, right? They both come with check to our king, so we can't do this. So I played bishop e3. Now, it's not an ideal move in the sense that ideally you'd love to play moves forward on opponent's half of the board, right? And that kind of violates that thing. But at least it's an attacking move, which is again something that we would love to play. Like, by the way, Stockfish does not like this move. Stockfish says that bishop h4 was stronger. Because from here, not only we cover the bishop and the pawn, but also the bishop remains to be on this active diagonal, supports our advancement. And again, Stockfish is right. But from human standpoint, the issue with playing just a move is that now black has opportunity to play something. And there is a risk that you can blunder something, right? 
But if you play bishop e3, I'm attacking the queen. So black can't play any move. Black's gotta do something about this queen. And therefore, I reduce the chance for me to overlook something. Now, bishop f3, turns out that black can't even take it. Because white does not even need to recapture e7. It's just much stronger. You know, I'm attacking the rook, it's checked to the king. Or my queen is still active, so that's almost the end already. Therefore, black actually can't take it. And in the game, black just dropped the queen back. But now I can play the move forward. And opponents half the board, our favorite stuff. e7, hitting the rook, rook e8. Now the bishop returned back to g5, defending this pawn on e7. It actually seems to be the only defensive move that I played so far, right? Where it is just a defensive move without any attacking idea in itself, right? So I just want to defend the pawn. You could see how throughout so many moves I could stay away from any defensive moves. In this position, black played b5 in order to solidify this knight, because otherwise this bishop's pressure is annoying. All right, how do you play here? Same stuff, right? As corny as it sounds, how do I attack something on my opponent's half of the board? When you ask yourself that question, you limit your options significantly. You don't consider all the moves that are theoretically possible in the position, right? But I can see the move rookie six, which will hit the queen. So that's one move to consider. But what I don't like about it is that normally I consider an attacking move, a move that forces my opponent to defend, that forces him to drop back, to worsen his position somehow. While in this case, rookie six, well, a normal move to play, you know, allows black to play queen d5, you know, putting some pressure down here. And it doesn't look like I actually worsened black's position in any way. Rather, the queen became more active. So I don't like the move rookie six. It doesn't seem like a true attacking move to me for that reason. But what else? I played bishop c2, renewing the threat of queen to h7, which I had a couple moves ago, but then somehow we both forgot about it because of all the tactical tricks in the middle of the board. So now queen h7 is coming once again. Black played knight e5, trying to you know, bring up reserves and cover the file. Okay, which moves would I consider here? It's queen to h7 and rook takes e5, because it's a force in move and I would love to consider it. So I played rook takes e5 because I figure out that Black can't recapture, that will lead to queen to h7 checkmate, and at this point, black just resigned. Now it's time for a little practice. It is white to move. It is actually also my game, which I was playing against Kudin, and black's last move, knight b4, obviously creates a threat of knight takes a2, which would check the king, attack the bishop, etc. So please think about this and write it down in the comments below, and let's do it this way. Write it in the comments below which move would you play prior to watching this video, and which move would you play armed with the knowledge that you got now, so that you can see how easy it is actually to progress in chess, that you can do right away without necessity to spend years of practice, <laughs> okay? And by the way, it's actually quite funny that the way that I think is probably much more primitive than you'd expect from a GM, right? <laughs> so I just showed you how I followed basically the same idea throughout the entire game, and which is nice because it means that you can replicate it. And if you want to go deeper into this, I've got a dedicated course where I summarized all the fundamental principles that I follow while playing for opening middle game, how to avoid blunders, which is, you know, plus 300 rated points right away, if you just do that. And if you're curious, you can get it by clicking the link below the video in the description. Either way, I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you soon.